Uh, my name is Jamie Sherry. I work for Wowza, and I'm here with my colleague who will be joining me shortly, Scott Kelliker, to talk about uh, three-second end-to-end -end latency at scale. So I looked at this originally as a kind of a science project. Um, latency is a new, uh, it's not a new topic, but the idea of having ultra-low latency, low latency is pretty new. Um, and so we kind of looked at this as, uh, you know, experimental in, in a certain way. It starts with a question that we get asked all the time, which is, how do I lower the latency on my HLS stream? Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> um, and I figured the most appropriate way to answer a question is to ask more questions. And so, um, you know, we'd ask, well, what do you mean by latency? What, uh, what do you expect for latency? Why do you need low latency? And uh, over time, we would get, you know, a series of answers that would start to help us uh, put together charts like these. So um, feel free to use this, by the way. We know others have used it. Apparently, if they're using it, they must like it. Um, there are no standards that I know of for defining latency against use case with numbers. So we kind of put this together to kind of categorize latency with use cases and what people expect and, and what they need. Um, and uh, what you start to look at uh, more and more is that uh, there are actual use cases um, to, uh, to, to actually, that actually require low latency. So you're looking at new use cases which drive new business models. You, you, know, you talk about Periscope and Twitch, and, and uh, they've been talking about some of that today. Um, but the reality is interactive streaming and browser-based broadcasting, gaming, auctioning, all these types of use cases are actually requiring um, more low latency as the interaction grows in them. Um, this is coupled with the fact that Adobe Flash is going away. Sadly, the playback side is gone, uh, or almost gone. Um, the the published side will continue to go on, which is good. But ultimately, I think innovation is required here. And so, you know, we've been uh, doing a bunch of research to try to look at how we would go about uh, solving low latency for those use cases. And uh, so I know some of you will know what this is. Some of you may not. Um, you're old enough to know. So I feel like it's important to go back in time and look at what peop uh, companies and people have done with latency just to kind of give a perspective on where we can go with it. So I put a few slides in here that talk about Windows Media, for example. And uh, surprisingly, if you don't know, Paul Allen uses Windows Media still because of its low latency to deliver his movies to his ship wherever he goes in the world. It's fascinating. So, um, and he's still using it. In, uh, uh, I'm sure eventually he won't be able to because of the, the server uh, challenges there. But you have all these protocols that, that we're working on TCP, UDP. They're inherently low. It involves the encoder and the server and the player all, all contributing to, to lowering that latency. Um, there are things around fast start and all these other pieces that look a lot like what UDP and TCP technologies today are trying to do. So two to three seconds on Windows Media, that's pretty good. Uh, RTSP is still used today. Uh, Real is effectively gone, though, as a server. But again, um, really good low latency there. Um, as you can see, you can get uh, uh, sub one second. But some of the challenges with RTSP happen to be with scale. And so uh, it's not for everything. Uh, there's obviously Flash. Surprisingly, even with interactive streaming, two-way conversations, we actually uh, know of people still using it to do uh, you know, like two-way conversation with RTMP, getting globally two seconds or less, and that's acceptable to them. So it's, it's still impressive to see. So, um, And then, of course, there's HTTP, not exactly designed for low latency. There are a lot of techniques that are, are um, being applied now, and we'll talk a bit more about that. Scott will talk about that particular that are being applied to try to lower the latency on those. Again, it goes back to that original question. I have 30 seconds. Uh, a lot of people talk about the startup, but you know, eventually they see the delay between the broadcast and the playback as unacceptable, and how can they lower that? And that, that includes Dash as well. And I didn't include Silverlight and Smooth Streaming here because it's uh, kind of not there anymore. So uh, I'm going to hand Scott, and Scott's going to, you know, we have, there's new protocols. You all know about them, Quick, SRT. Um, there's the HTTP stuff that's being done with Akamai and others, and so Scott's going to talk a little bit more about where the considerations lie with using chunk-based and some of the other technologies out there. Uh. Yeah, so we, we decided to do a prototype because that's typically the way we learn uh, how things work. So some of the first considerations we made were, you know, should we be chunk-based? There's so many advantages to chunk-based. I mean, you have the, the benefit of the CDN, it lowers your cost. Uh, we have great things like peer-to-peer -peer delivery. Um, the whole world has moved to chunks, and there's a reason. It, it gives a great quality experience. Um, 
However, once we started to look at it, we thought, well, at scale, we think we can get three to six seconds. And that's really useful in a lot of use cases. Um, but we thought, what if we use an old school streaming uh, approach to this? I mean, streaming originally meant a stream of frames delivered from the server to the client, and then it kind of came to mean uh, chunks being delivered. Let's, let's take a step back and see what we can do with that. As we started to play with that, uh, just kind of in a lab environment, we thought, well, I think we can get maybe two, three, maybe, you know, maybe even lower than that uh, at scale. Um, so um, based on looking at use cases that we thought were good for our company, we thought, let's start there. Because we, like some of the use cases Jamie mentioned uh, with, you know, auctions and, and gambling, anything that requires high interactivity, uh, three to six seconds just is not going to cut it. Um, so we decided our, our first choice was let's, let's invent something um, that's more stream-based. And then our next, uh, our next consideration was should we use WebRTC, WebSockets, how should we deliver this? Um, for a long time, we've heard that you know, WebRTC is the way to deliver low latency streams. And um, I wasn't sure if that was a sneeze or a laugh from, from somebody on that. Um, we thought there were two ways we could deliver with WebRTC. We could, we could deliver the audio and video um, the way WebRTC delivers audio and video. Um, there are codec limitations with that, though. Um, there's also um, some browser differences. We've had, with our WebRTC offerings, we've had some, uh, uh, some breakage uh, with browser changes quite a bit. Um, and if we do that, the data channel is not going to be synced to the audio and video because the data channel is not time synced. And uh, that was a big limitation for any type of any type of metadata, any type of interactivity really requires data to go along with your audio and video. Um, so then the other way we could use WebRTC is we could just put everything right down the data channel, audio, video, and data. Um, as we thought about that, it seemed like, well, we could do that, but why not use WebSockets because they are uh, exceedingly bulletproof at this point, and they're pretty much the same across browsers. We found very little difference in them. Um, so we decided let's do let's do a streaming basic approach uh, across the WebSocket. And so our third consideration was let's not just do this in a lab because, you know, frankly, we can get really low latency in a lab. We know that we've done it. Um, we need to do this with real streaming scenarios. Um, luckily. You know, because we've been around for a while, we have a lot of pieces lying around, which is the, the image you see behind me. Um, you know, we, we have a streaming server. That's our primary business. We have, a, uh, you know, we have an infrastructure for a service-based uh, cloud offering. Um, and we also have our own MSE-based player. So we needed a few pieces, um, but we had those building blocks we could start with. Um, so what do we need to build to do this prototype? So we'd have to take our media server and we'd have to enhance it so we could stream some protocol over WebSockets. And um, we, have a, we have a protocol we use internally called WOWS that uh, is used for our server-to-server -server communication. So it's designed to be low latent. Um, it's also it's proprietary, which I'm sure does not make a lot of people happy. Um, but we could take that and quickly build something and we could tweak it as we saw fit. So that was our starting point. So we'd need to add that to the, the media server. Um, we'd also need to add that to our player. So we have to ingest the WebSocket. Um, you know, we already can stream WOWs. So we know how to play it back. We just need to deliver it over a WebSocket. So that wasn't a very big lift. Um, and then we also um, we wanted to do this with an origin and midgress and edge infrastructure, because we wanted to test it across regions. Um, we wanted to test it in an environment that was um, realistic, how, how our customers would use it. And then the last thing we needed was some way to measure the latency, which um, I'll talk a little bit more about later, but it's, um, it's not that easy. The, the, the easiest and most accurate way is to stream a video of a camera <laughs> back to yourself and take screenshots. And that's how we started. Um, later on, we came up with some more elaborate ways to measure um, real-world latency that our, uh, our preview customers would use. Um, so essentially, we wanted to go from you know, our encoder, origin, midgress, maybe in the same region, maybe in a different region, edges, and onto a player, and, and measure that latency and, and see, how, um, see how, what we could get. Um, 
So I'm going to go into the details of some of what we did, but the results, and here's, yeah, here's one of the screenshots of the camera. Um, the results, we, could, we were finding we could get one and a half to two seconds, and that is from the camera to when that, that same frame is uh, shown on the video player. Um, so we were quite happy with that. Um, we think we can get that lower. Um, there's a lot of potential enhancements and uh, optimizations we can do really all along the chain. And there's, it's really about shaving time at each place along the way. There's no one answer. It's a bunch of combination of technologies. Um, so let me talk a little bit first about the delivery network. Um, like I said, we wanted to have an origin, midgress, and edge. Um, we built this on uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, we liked their traffic manager approach to choosing um, a, the nearest um, ingest origin and the nearest playback edge. Uh, that was really useful on cutting down latency be on ingest and also on playback. Um, I think the uh, uh, other cloud services have similar technology. That's just the one that we chose uh, to, to try this. Each of those uh, nodes run, runs a WASA streaming engine. So we basically ingest at the origin, we repeat to the midgrass, repeat to the edges um, using the WOWS protocol. Um, and then we are load balancing and scaling those edges. Um, as you would imagine, this is a stateful um, connection from the client to the server. So you know, bringing edges up and down is uh, one, of the, one of the tricks. And um, so far, we're really good at bringing them up. We're not quite as good at as bringing them down as we need to be. Um, it's, challenging. Um, like I said, we optimized the first mile and last mile with the, uh, the traffic manager uh, from Azure, uh, which was really useful. And then the WOWS protocol, um, this is what we use to communicate with our server. So we're, we're, very, used, we're very, um, <laughs> very familiar with it. Um, and so we basically just repurposed it. So it, it streams from the, from the uh, server to the client. Um, it's like any of the other early streaming protocols. It's just a pipe, and you're just shoving frames down at time, time data, so audio and video and data. Um, it also has a back channel, so you can um, send information back to the server. Um, we have some ideas on how to optimize that, uh, both for uh, ABR um, as well as to clue the server in on what might be happening on the client to maybe improve the, uh, improve the latency. Um, this is a proprietary protocol, but uh, this could be implemented in any other type of streaming protocol. Um, and we think we might want to move towards you know, some, something like that, where we have some type of spec and people can um, use a different protocol other than WOWS. Um, the player, uh, so we have an MSE-based player. Um, really, it's just to add the WebSocket and then to tune the heck out of it for uh, small buffers. Um, so we deliver, we have, a, we have a small buffer on the front of MSE. Um, we found that. Well, you need some buffer, or you're you're gonna be thrashing between, uh, you know, little tiny little tiny rebufferings and actually playing the video. So we have about a quarter second buffer on the end, and we've we've played with tuning that down to about 100 milliseconds, and it still works pretty well. Um, and then we deliver two frames at a time to MSC. Um, for some reason, we couldn't get one frame to work, which is why we do two frames. Um, and then we have a, a system that measures the drift. So when the when the video starts playing and it's in a steady state. We, we look at the packet time, we look at the, the real time, and then we monitor that. So we both monitor the network and uh, the playback to make sure that they're, they're staying, um, staying in time. And because we're only single bit rate at this point, if we fall behind because of network congestion, um, we have a catch-up algorithm. So we'll play a little bit faster um, so, we can, uh, so we can catch up. Uh, you know, different use cases require a different time to catch up. Some use cases will want to just jump ahead uh, to the live point. Others will want to slowly catch up um, so it's not, you know, so you can't tell uh, that the audio is, is playing faster. Um, but that, that allows us to keep uh, in to the live point and keep the latency uh, as low as possible. Okay, this has a lot of limitations. <laughs> um, single bit rate at this point. Um, we are looking at uh, ABR. Uh, it is difficult. For one thing, measuring is quite difficult. Um, you also don't want to be thrashing because you're not sending chunks, you're sending frames. So you don't want to be thrashing between two renditions uh, every other frame. 
Um, so uh, that's something we're going to look, look at going forward. Um, right now we're H.264 AAC. Really, that's just that's the lowest common denominator on the browsers, which is why that's where we are. Um, there's no reason this couldn't be a, uh, a, another uh, set of codecs. Um, the MSE implementations are not really designed for low latency. I mean, um, for example, we, we have a problem. Um, once it hits a stalled state, uh, one of the browsers then requires more data than it did on initial playback to continue. And every time it hits a stall state, it wants a little bit more. And so that builds up the latency. So I think there's some things that can be done on the MSE side to really uh, kind of tune that for uh, low latency. Um, right now, we don't have iOS, iOS browser playback because there's no MSE. Um, if you would like to see MSE on iOS, please log a bug with Apple. <laughs> they told me that's the only way it will happen. So I see potential for 300 bugs logged this afternoon. Um, that would really solve a lot of problems in the browser world for um, consistent playback and playback other than, um, than just HLR chunk playback. It would open up a lot of opportunities for, for innovation. Um, and I think that probably the biggest limitation is that it can't leverage a traditional HTTP infrastructure. So um, you know, that lowers cost. Uh, this solution is more expensive. However, if you have a use case where you want one and a half second latency, um, that may be a good trade-off for you. And we, we have potential customers that are, they are willing um, because, you know, an, an auction site, you know, for them it's about quickness or uh, a gambling site. You know, it's, it's the number of, number of bets in an hour is huge amounts of money to these type of sites. Um, so it's really, it's the trade-off like Matt were talking about earlier, um, you know, between all the various factors. So as far as monitoring and measuring, we, we did some interesting things here. Um, we actually inject latency uh, beacons. So we, so, um, we, we have our, uh, our own little mobile encoder um, that we use for testing. So in that mobile encoder, we, um, we will inject a beacon. And at each, each uh, point along the way, through the origin, migress, edge, and player, um, we actually grab that beacon, compare the time, and then send it to a stat server. And this allows us, we have people that are previewing this now, this allows us to get a view of uh, latency across the whole system. And so we can see where the person is, is actually streaming from um, and what their latency is. So we can get, you know, instead of just a peek at one player, uh, the one in my office, um, we can get a peek at what, what everybody uh, is seeing. Um, this was a little challenging because um, client-side clocks are very, very erratic. Um, so we had to come up with a scheme in our player to, um, our, our origin, migress, and edge are, are time synced, um, and we're pretty confident of that time sync. So our player actually has to go out and, and make a few requests to the, to the edges, and based on the round trip time, calculate what it thinks the time is. So we have a pretty good estimate. Um, and um, yeah, originally we were seeing you know, negative latency, 52 seconds of latency, it was all over the board, but um, now we're getting very, very good, accurate numbers, um, and it's very interesting data to, to look at. So what's next? Um, for us, this is, this is research, um, but it's also a product. So what we have now is being, um, it's in preview, it will be in our, it will be a product soon, it will be released soon. But then we have all this other research we need to do. Um, some of the things that, that Akamai and Periscope and uh, GPAC are doing around uh, HTTP uh, chunk transfer encoding is really, really interesting. And they're seeing um, sub three seconds. So um, I think we would like to be involved in that research and do some research on our side. I think that plus CMath and predicting what chunks are going to be there, um, I think it's really promising. Um, I look at it as two different use cases. I, I think that can, can get pretty low, and then I think the stream base can get even lower, and that we really have a separation of maybe, you know, one and a half and below is one use case, and, um, you know, one to three is a different use case. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, another thing that we're looking at is um, SRT, so that's Secure Reliable Transport. So this is, a, this is a protocol that really allows you to reduce latency. It's primarily used uh, at the ingest point. Um, so there's a new um, 
SRT Alliance that quite a few encoder vendors have joined um, that will uh, basically put this technology in the encoders. So if you think about uh, TCP, you, you, know, you, have a, you have an ACK between every single uh, frame, um, which can, you know, if, if you don't have your bandwidth, you, you, it'll uh, add to the latency. The way SRT works, it's, it's UDP, but it has the ability to go back to the server and say, hey, I missed packet number three. Send it to me again, and it will put it back in place where it needs to go. It also has logic such that um, you know, after a certain amount of time, it'll just say, oh, OK, we'll, we'll give up on packet number three and move on. Um, so it's really good for reducing latency, uh, long haul, uh, you know, long haul delivery. It, it's great for uh, increasing quality. Um, I, I highly recommend checking out the SRT Alliance. It's it's really a great organization. It's just getting started, um, so there's lots of room for involvement. Um, and they have a great demo on what a video looks like with 1% packet loss and 2% packet loss, um, and then what SRT does for you. It's it's really qu quite phenomenal. Um, so right now we have Wows over WebSockets. Um, we are talking about um, creating a, a JavaScript component that would be open source so other players could use that. We don't want this solely for our player. Most of our customers don't use our player. They use some other player for a um, you know, certain feature. Um, so we want to make this uh, open source so other people can put it in their player. Um, we're looking at adaptive bitrate. Um, we have some ideas on how to solve it. We don't know yet if that will be how successful that will be. Um, and they're also looking at iOS browser playback. There's, there's some ways that you can, th there's some hacks you can do and people have done and we're looking at some of those because we really need to be able to play there. Um, and then we're looking at optimizations. Um, we, we have some ideas to improve time to first frame for low latency, which is um, not as good as we'd like at this point. Um, and we would like to further reduce the latency. We think there's a lot of tuning. It, it's, it's going to become more work for, for smaller amounts of reduced latency. Um, it's, it you know, gets harder and harder to, to cut milliseconds off, but um, we have some ideas around there. Um, that's it. Do you have any questions?